Federal Realty Investment Trust is one of my largest holdings in my long-term dividend stock portfolio, and it has an impressive 53 years of dividend growth. It has been hit hard by the economic shutdown, yet they still managed to raise their dividend. In this video, I'm going to go through a recent interview with the CEO of FRT and discuss how they plan to power through the shutdown and continue pumping out dividends for another 50 plus years. People think no one's shopping. People think restaurants are done. Gym's done. Bankruptcy's galore. And yet you raise the dividend. What's that about? Well, let's, boy, you got to unpack a lot there, Jim. There's a lot to talk about. And, uh, you know, are things a mess in the middle of a pandemic? Of course they are. But to me, it's not about today. It's about a number of things. Whether we'll be able to make our way through this, I, I could not tell you how confident I am that that's the case. And more importantly, what's going to happen on the other side of this? Let, let's start with the dividend for a second. First of all, in a REIT, the dividend is probably more important right. to investors as a component of their total return than it is to most C-Corp companies, I would think. And so there should be, at least in my view, a, a real robust attempt to continue to, to effectively go through with the bargain that those investors paid for when they invested in the company. So the notion of, of a continuing investment is a real important part to federal, so much so as you pointed out, 53 years, that's since 1967. And while there hasn't been a pandemic like this since 1967, there's been a whole bunch of recessions. There's been a whole bunch of interest rates in the high teens, all kinds of other things. And this company was able to continue to pay its dividend. Why and how? We're built for this and we're built to power through this. And it's not just in terms of the balance sheet and the liquidity, which is critically important, even now, we're, we sat at the end of June with $2 billion worth of, of liquidity, both cash and an unused credit line, even with all the development that we're going to do, even with paying the dividend continually by February of next year, which I think you would agree we'd have an awful lot more visibility to the future, we'll still have $1.4 billion worth of liquidity right, but done, uh, at done. the company. So we can pay it. All right. Now, you can pay. It doesn't mean you should pay it, right? Right. So let me right, get right. there for a second. Okay. If you okay. believe we can, then what? why should we? It's all about our confidence in what happens on the other side of this. And that's all based on not just the real estate itself, but more importantly, every conversation that we're having these days with tenants, prospective tenants, about where we're trying to get to on the other side of this. It's all about one premise, improving the where the the locations that they are doing business in. Well, would so putting, in, put in putting an Amazon warehouse improve the location? <laughs> we'll have that conversation <laughs> if you want to about the mall side. I'll get there in a, in a second if you'd like to. But 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 not for us, not in the shopping centers, not in the mixed use, not in the lifestyle stuff. Rather, what we're talking about is, is if you've been operating in that B or that C shopping center, here is that opportunity to improve your location. Now, why would you do that? Not only, not only because it's a proven retail location, but more importantly, today, think about it from a tenant's perspective. They don't know who their co-tenancy is going to be right. over the next right. few years. They don't know who their landlord is in, in, in terms of, of or, or needing to have a landlord that is liquid, that is visionary, that knows they'll be their partner. We're built for this. That is the line that really hits home here. The confidence of the CEO, Don Wood, is not only reassuring, but is backed up by the numbers. FRT is one of the most high quality REITs you can buy and has a long track record of reliable dividend growth. He mentions in the interview that they remain well positioned for the future, having over $2 billion in unused liquidity and many future developments in the pipeline. On top of this, their focus on quality properties in affluent areas positions them better over many of their competitors. This provides a competitive advantage in times of crisis, as many well-positioned tenants are actually using this as a time to move to more high-quality and proven locations, like FRT. So the demand for FRT's properties are relatively strong, positioning themselves to be one of the winners in their industry coming out of the economic shutdown. With that said, let's get back to the interview. I'm in the restaurant business. When it gets cold, we have no outside seating. We right. don't know what we're going to do. You have a lot of restaurants. You've come on many times. Experiential, experiential. The experiential's hurting you. Um, you've got sure. six, what? How many different companies are bankrupt? That I know they're keeping the ones that are you're in. You're in, but they're chiseling away at your income everywhere, Don. Jim, there's no question that that. 
we entered into this whole mess in an over-retailed environment in the right. U.S., right? Well, certainly, what, no matter what category you're talking to, talking about, this will exacerbate failings. This will exacerbate the oversupply. That's the macro condition. There's, there's no question about that. But to me, that means there won't be, not everybody can be a winner here, so you better be pretty careful. You have to ask me, but where's, Don, your demand going to come from? to be able to backfill and to grow and to create value on the other side of this. That's where I'm saying, look at the, the improvement in real estate quality mm -hmm. that tenants who hadn't had that opportunity before can do now. That's what we're hearing. That's not a guess. Those but are do the you questions. need a vaccine? Does your strategy need a vaccine? First of all, the whole, every strategy, in my view, of a company, any company that's been hurt by this needs a vaccine. Okay. So fair, let's fair. let's get that off the table. Absolutely, there needs to be a, a vaccine. But but absent that, does not it doesn't mean, from my point of view, that that we won't get through this and be able to create everything I'm thinking about is not about today. It's about later in 21. But but, but David Simon 22. says the same thing to me. But then you know you had to adjust his dividend. You know, look, the enclosed mall business is a different business. Right. right. And when they, just going back to the, the Amazon, for that, I mean, can you, I mean, the, the whole notion of last mile uh, delivery of, uh, of a good right. has been the bane of, of, of online forever. Does it make sense to effectively get closer and, and you know, the close in suburban malls to, to do that? Sure it does. I hope they do. Now, I don't know what that does to the merchandising of the, of the mall, but that's a, that's a smaller problem, frankly, than, 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 you know, getting the right tenant in that space. But to me, Jim, nobody argues about this. The best way to deliver a, a, a good to the end user is to have that end user go to the store and pick it up. That's why what we're doing with the pickup, which as far as I know, is the most comprehensive landlord right. organized program out in the street. And that's not something for this month or next month. That's forever. That's the way you engage the community with your uh, bricks and mortar retail. All right, so Don, we're, we're going to have to cut it short. But uh, look, I know that if it's good, if anyone's going to pull it off, it's you. Uh, I think, it right, off, everyone Jim, needs to say. read the conference call because you lay it all out. And I believed after I read the conference call, and I was skeptical before I did, Don. But I believe. All right. Jim, let's just show you over time. All right, fair enough. One of the keys to FRT's business is their diversified income stream. Their tenants are across many different categories, such as residential, office, grocery and drug, banking, restaurants, apparel, beauty, fitness, and countless more. As of June 30th, 68% of their total rents were collected. Many of the sectors were practically uninterrupted, like banking, grocery and drug, residential, and office. However, others like restaurants, retail shops, and gyms were hit much harder. This is all trending in a positive direction, though as by July 31st, FRT improved to 76% of total rents collected. I suspect this will only continue to improve as we move out of the economic shutdown. FRT has innovated during these unprecedented times, creating a new developer-organized pickup infrastructure to support all of their tenants. This shows that FRT acts as partners with their tenants, realizing that they're an essential part of the company. This program is planned to stay in place, adding to the long-term potential and reliability of FRT. In the Q2 earnings call, the CEO said, continued positive trends in our collections, our fortress balance sheet built for times like these, and most importantly, the continued desirability of our locations, as evidenced by our current tenant discussions, gave us the confidence this quarter to increase our dividend for the 53rd year. I certainly think that FRT is well positioned for the long term and that their dividend will grow for decades to come. If you want to learn more about FRT, then check out the full stock review I did on the company. As a fair warning, that was only my second video on the channel, so the quality is not up to par with my more recent content. If you're wondering about my buying strategy with FRT, I'll be looking to pick up more whenever it's below my cost per share of $78.16. This is potentially one of the best times to buy FRT as it's trading vastly below its historical prices. Right now you can get FRT at over a 5% dividend yield, which is dramatically more than its typical yield between 2.5 and 3.5%. Of course, don't follow my advice blindly, and be sure to do your own research before making any investment decisions. Thank you for watching Dividend Data. I'd greatly appreciate it if you could leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you follow me on Twitter, link in the description, you can get real-time updates of my buys and dividends coming in. You can support the channel on Patreon and be a part of helping make these videos happen. The link is in the description. Please leave a comment below, and thank you for watching.